Hello, my name's John Doyle from the excelcount.com website uh, and I just want to talk a, a little bit about a Honeycomb panel design tool uh, that's available to download uh, from the website. Uh, let's just uh, think about what a Honeycomb panel is uh, and some of you may have come across these sorts of materials before. They're made up of a skin and the skin is bonded using this adhesive sheet to a, an, a, a honeycomb core uh, and again a bottom face is made in exactly the same way. They don't have to be exotic materials like uh, aluminium uh, which was shown on the previous sketch. You can also have very basic honeycomb panel uh, designs. This is made from uh, wood and cardboard uh, but it becomes a very strong and rigid uh, material to work with. Uh, and this is uh, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we uh, have a nice strong uh, board here with very little deflection, uh, doing a very good job there of supporting the man. And this is what we're trying to avoid, uh, where the honeycomb panel just isn't up to the job. So what we use to, uh, to ch make those checks is this little spreadsheet here. And the spreadsheet's uh, broken down into a number of sections. There's a section here for the core, a section here for the skins, and the section here for the panel. So we have to decide what core we're going to use, we have to decide what skin we're going to use, and then we have to work out uh, uh, our panel dimensions and how it's loaded. And then we're going to calculate some results and hopefully we get a, a pass. Uh, let's start with um, the uh, core material. Uh, you, you select the core material from uh, a number of pre-existing materials. So these are all honeycomb materials that are openly available on the market. Uh, so you use this drop down to select which one you want to use. And then you set the, uh, the thickness of the core as indicated by this sketch here, it's 25 millimeters. Uh, and automatically um, there's a number of uh, parameters are read off here from uh, the data sheets that lie behind this uh, front page of the calculation. Um, Probably the most important thing that the core has to do is, and this may seem a little bit simple, but it has to keep apart the top skin and the bottom skin. Uh, and it does that by exerting a shear stress. Uh, and in fact, what we're reading off here is an allowable core shear stress. And that's typically uh, the limiting value uh, when it comes to the core material. And obviously it's dependent upon the cell size, that's the size of the uh, honeycomb dimension of the individual honeycomb dimension. Uh, let's move now on to skins. Uh, we have uh, TF, which is the thickness of the, uh, the, the face or the skin. Uh, and uh, again, we, we have a number of materials here to choose from. At the moment, I'm dealing with aluminium. Uh, and again, it's reading off a number of uh, uh, parameters here. And in fact, it's calculating some of them as well. So it's uh, it calculates a number of limiting values, and here we have three limiting values. So the core is limited by uh, the allowable core shear stress, but the skins would be limited by one of the following, or the lowest of the following, I ought to say. It's either going to be limited by the uh, yield stress in the face, or it's going to be limited by the uh, intercell buckling stress, and that's where we get little ripples of buckling that occur uh, uh, over each cell of the honeycomb. Uh, and then we also have uh, another buckling failure mode, which is a wrinkling stress. And this is really where the honeycomb doesn't support the skin too well and the skin just buckles. Uh, and so we, at the moment, we've, 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 we're calculating three values and the lowest of these is uh, 270. So at the moment, we're going to be limited. The, the face is going to be, or the skin is going to be limited by the yield stress in the face. Uh, on to the loading now. Uh, this is saying we have a panel uh, that's uh, 200 millimeters long by 500 millimeters wide and it's supporting a load of 800 newtons. That's about the weight of a man. Uh, and it's telling me that the loading is that it's a beam and it's simply supported with a uniform load distribution. So uh, in fact that man is uh, lying down across the beam so he's, he's distributing his, his load over the entire length of the beam. And it's telling me now that uh, we have uh, calculated a 10 millimeter deflection, uh, I beg your pardon, a 10 millimeter face stress, 
a 10 megapascal phase stress. Uh, and the allowable phase stress, as we've seen up here, is 270. And in fact, I'm only using 4% of that, uh, that allowable, so 10 divided by 270 is 4%. So I get a green tick. Uh, I'm good to go on that one. And the same for deflection. Calculated a 4 millimeter deflection. Uh, I'm allowed to have a 10 millimeter deflection. That's based upon a two hundredth of the span. So two thousand divided by two hundred is ten. So we say that's that's a good value to use for a deflection. Otherwise, a designs become a, a bit too flexible and a bit too bouncy. Uh, so we have uh, we view forty percent of the capacity there. So we get another tick in the box. And the other check we do is to make sure that the core can keep the the uh, top and bottom skins. Uh, away from each other and in fact we're only using 5% of that capacity as well so we're very happy with that. Uh, if we were to change the loading now, so I'm going to come down here to um, let's have a, look, a simple support with a central load so the man's now standing in the middle, uh, then okay uh, we've got a higher uh, deflection and the stress is slightly higher but it's still working. Uh, if we now went for a, uh, a wood material uh, then we can see that that wouldn't work. Now, you can see how easy it is to do this. We're basically looking for our uh, green uh, ticks and we don't want any red crosses. Uh, and we can change the loading very simply. Uh, and if these become uh, a little bit difficult to read or understand, then there's a little sketch down here below you so that you can see exactly what the, all the beam uh, loading scenarios are on all the rectangular plate loading scenarios are and all the circular plate loading scenarios are. Okay, so I hope you can see how uh, quickly this is going to help you size uh, your honeycomb panels uh, to get uh, designs that uh, are strong enough and are not too flexible uh, and, will, and will work uh, uh, exactly as we want them to. Okay, thanks for listening.